Hello all and welcome to a very, very, very special and dear episode of Ma Conversa with me, Marisa Savachosha. Today, episode 9, February 9th, 2021, we will be talking about the legendary, well, he's legendary to me, Hildebrand Chosha, my husband, who is behind me. And look, my shoulders disappear. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and so today is a special episode because I will be talking about my husband, where he's from, what he does, and who he is. And I also thought since, so his birthday's in two days. His birthday is February 11th. And since this month is not only the month of his birthday, the month of love, the month of Valentine's Day, not only that, but it's our anniversary month. So it will be five years together, four years married, and three years married in the church. So five, four, three. <laughs> So I'm going to talk a little bit about him. He is from Khiberinha Tersedem. And he's not here physically today with us because A, he's working, and B, he is a little bit camera shy. So I hope that one day when he musters the courage, I mean, he has some type of courage that he can get in front of bulls. So I'm sure one day he'll muster the courage to be in front of you all and to be here heard on the radio. But for now, you will have to make do with just me and him as the background. <laughs> so my husband was born in 1992 in Khiberinha, Terceira. This is part of Angrado Iruismo. And Terceira is an island of Azores, Azores. Azores are the islands of Portugal. There are nine of them. So he is from um, one of the larger islands, not as big as Senegal, but the population in Terceira is, which by the way, this was months ago that I, I was curious about this. This um, population of Terceira is, I believe it was in, now, now I'm not even sure. Now I don't even wanna say something on air. That's not true. So let me Google this right now. I want to say that it's close to 60,000. And I was curious about Saint Georges because my um, grandma was from Saint Georges and I was curious to see the population over there. And I believe it was, yeah, I was right. Okay. Yeah. I was very stunned with the number for Terceda because, like I told you guys, it's almost 60,000 inhabitants in Terceda. So the actual number is. 56,437, and as you guys know, this is just a roundabout number. Um, and then Saint Georges, when I read it, and I'm gonna confirm it here now, it was closer to nine, or it was 9,000. So compared to Terceda that has 56,000 inhabitants, the island where my grandma was from only has, and I'm confirming it now here on Google, 9,500, so yeah. Big difference. And now to even make a further comparison, and now my, my interest and curiosity has peaked here. Let me look at San Miguel because that is the larger island. Yeah, <laughs> way larger by a long shot. In San Miguel, the population is 140,000. So I'm a numbers person. I love numbers. Um, they fascinate me. So you can kind of see there the difference. I mean, San Jorge, 9,000, Terceira, 56,000, San Miguel, 140,000 inhabitants. So he's from Terceira. He's been into bullfighting since he was about 16 years old. This photo here is from Terceira. This is one of the, I think it's one of the last bullfights that he did prior to coming to the United States. He came to California six years ago. Um, so I think that this was around that time, right before he left. And I also have photos to switch out the background to show you guys um, other shots from bullfights that he's done here in California. And it's always funny when I talk about that, especially with my American friends. 
because a they don't even know that california has bullfights right and then b they've never been to one never heard of one never met a bullfighter so it's just very all very new and exciting for them when i start talking about it and at, at work i actually used to have plenty of photos of him um, bullfighting and everybody would come to my desk and they'd say what's that is that your husband is that a bull is he fight is he in front of a bull and i'm like yes so of course that here's another picture here this is here in uh newark california and we have our our buddy andrew right there in the back as you can see he's behind the red with a white circle right here where my finger is pointing and so i actually really liked this bull any anytime there's a bull that's kind of like red or orange for some reason i i love those ones so here's one from newark let me see if i can get another one going here uh, the other one that i wanted to show you guys was is san jose festa and let me just check it out here let me see bear with me i know it's it's would be better if he was here right but i'm gonna try my best to see if he can come for the next time so this one here is you can see here that he's actually grabbing the bull from the front from the horns he likes to one of his goals is always to touch the head of of the bull or the horns um it's it's like a, a fun challenge for him to do that this one was the first ever the first ever san jose bullfight which was in 2016 and honestly being born and raised in a little portugal san jose i never thought that i would see the day where bullfight especially a bullfight a, a corda would come to our city I, I never would imagine this never so when it actually when the year he moved to san jose was 2016 that's when we started living together and that was literally the first time they ever had it so it was a perfect perfect time he moved here to san jose in may and they had it in june <laughs> so it was a perfect timing and then after that they've had it ever since i mean um because of the covid we didn't do it for 2020 obviously we still don't know if we're going to be able to do it in 2021 we are hopeful that we will be able to but for right now it's not looking very well as far as the virus goes as you all know so we just gotta sit tight be patient keep the faith um keep positive and one day hopefully soon we will all return to be celebrating with each other different events and here behind me now is a picture of the bullfight that we did with joe vaj for their birthdays so interesting enough joe vaj is also a kapinga and he is from the same place as my husband he's from ribeirinha terceira and they shared the same birthday so it was only natural the two bull lovers the two kapingas from ribeirinha do a birthday party together so that was pretty cool and um so i won't i won't bore you guys too much with this but i definitely did want to say the story of how we met because that is actually a question that comes up quite often everybody wants to know uh how did we meet how did this all come about and then they get even more interested because they think it's cute or intriguing or or interesting that he's a bullfighter and i'm a fadista and we can go we can trace that back to the 1800s in portugal where that was a very a, a very normal thing that you would see the bullfighters would go to the tabernage after bullfighting and they would go to the tabernage and they would hear the music they would hear the fadistas and and many times yeah many times they did fall in love with each other so it's kind of funny how we are souls connected and met um i do believe that everything happens for a reason i definitely do believe in that and so our our story is quite interesting and quite funny kind of cute obviously right of course i would think that um and so given that it is 
the birthday special for Hildbrand. I just wanted to say happy birthday, my love. I love you so much. You do so much for us. I really appreciate you. Look at me, I'm getting all emotional here. And so in lieu of our anniversary, I just wanna say happy anniversary too, babe. Um, I love you so much. <laughs> without crying on air, <laughs> without crying on air, yes. We're both um, really sappy when it comes to that. He is actually way more in tune with his uh, emotions as far as showing them more so than I am actually. So I, when I met him, I was appreciative of that because he's the one that softened me up a bit. Um, I do have to give all the credit to him for softening me up because I was a pretty tough cookie before he came into the picture. So thank you so much for making me into the Care Bear that I am today. <laughs> Um, but yes, so the story is quite funny. It's a quite interesting, funny, funny story. So of course, let's go back into 2015, where he requested me on Facebook. And of course, I think you all knew I was going to either say Facebook or something. Um, <laughs> uh, the other relationships that I had, oddly enough, also resulted from social media, but it's not too surprising because that is the world that we live in now. That is what we use is social media. So it's only natural that sometimes we do meet people or, or connect with somebody that may end up being your future husband or may end up being your future baby daddy. <laughs> so for us, that is definitely the case. We met on Facebook and uh, no glamorous story about that, uh, that portion at least. He, we had mutual friends. He saw me tagged in the photos plenty of times and he decided to request me and he started talking to me. But of course, at the time I was uh, not interested in a boyfriend and I told him and I was very, very honest with him. I, I thanked him so much for the flattery and sweetness and whatever else, of course, but I was told him I was not interested and we could be friends, but if you want anything else, basically was barking up the wrong tree. Well, that didn't seem to face him much. He still continued to try. This little string on my sweater is driving me nuts. Um, yes. <laughs> so yeah, anyways. And he would always message me and I would take my sweet time to message him back. Either it would be hours or it would be the next day or two days and poor guy. Every morning I'd have a good morning, no matter if I responded or not. And you know, the persistence w was apparent to me. Uh, it didn't go unnoticed. I definitely did see that he was being persistent and he was interested but I just had my head in the clouds at that time. I was all, all about, that was the year that I went to America's Got Talent. That was the year that I did Carnival. We went to the East Coast. We did shows there. We did shows in California. So I was kind of getting more into my music again, um, which was a very good thing. And um, thank God for you, Hilbrand, that with you, you always support my music. You always tell me, to go for it and I do appreciate that because there are people out there that will do the complete opposite for you. They will tear you down till you're nothing. They will not support you. So thank God from up above that he answered my prayers and he paired me up with somebody or made me realize that this was somebody that was gonna be a better choice for me than what I had been doing previously. <laughs> um, but anywho, I digress. So let's fast forward to when my carnival dance went to Turlock. So when my carnival dance went to Turlock, that's when I told him, hey, buddy, if you want to meet me, you're going to have to come to Turlock to watch me do my carnival thing or else you're never going to meet me because I don't come to your neck of the woods and I'm not going to come to your neck of the woods for you. So if you want to meet me, this is your one and only chance. You only have this chance. Yeah, that's exactly how I was. I'm telling you, I was a tough cookie. So he said, no worries. He was going to be there. And 
I was looking forward to it. I was excited. But, of course, I thought it was going to be a great night. I thought he was going to be there. And, of course, uh, <laughs> muddy's a fashion. Something impromptu always has to happen. I just changed the background right now to one of our maternity photos. I think it's really cute. So uh, it's one of my favorites, actually. So, anywho, back to the story. Bear with me. I'm a huge storyteller. And when I tell you the stories, I like to take you on different <laughs> twists and turns. So please bear, bear with me. Um, so I told him, if you want to meet me, you got to go to the carnival dance. So when we were on the stage and before the stage, I was looking for him. I was looking for him. Didn't see him there. Then when I was on stage, uh, yeah, on stage as the curtains opened, I was looking for him in the crowd. Yes, I was. And no, he was definitely not there. Uh, if you've ever been to, or for anyone listening here who's ever been to Dancers Carnival at Turlock, Our Lady of Assumption, they know that it can be very quaint in there. And I could see basically everyone and he was nowhere to be found. So yeah, I was not impressed with that. Here we go, here we go. Another guy lying. <laughs> wow, su such a shocker there, right? Um, but at the time I did not know that he was not able to go at all. He got off of late, very, very late. He was working, he used to work at um, a cow dairy and a goat dairy. So he used to do two different kinds of dairies and many times he would stay over and yeah he would stay over he would work a lot of hours and on that specific day he had to stay later and when he got home there was nobody that could take him because he didn't have a car at the time and there was just nobody that could take him and i didn't know that so of course i was already assuming all these things that he was just a liar and all this stuff of course you know your mind starts going everywhere every which way I'm like, okay, well, this guy already lost his chance to meet me. Well, whatever. On, on to the next situation in life, right? Well, I was very, very, very wrong. And it's actually, um, it, it's very funny how this all went down. Because as soon as I got back to my friend niece's house, that's the house that I was staying at. And um, she literally was down the street from his house. So it was very cool. Um, I went to her house for some dinner afterwards. And we were contemplating on maybe going out afterwards. So, out, like literally after dinner, he ended up messaging me and I was not impressed. He said, hey, I'm so sorry I couldn't make it today. He basically told me the excuse that I told you guys. And I was still not impressed with that. Like I'm telling you, I was a tough cookie. And he said, can you give me one more chance, please? Can you come? to Hot Rods, which is a bar in Hillmark, and across the street, basically, from Nisa's house, his house. Can you come uh, to the bar in Hillmar and I'll meet you there? Or because I'm already here, and I'll meet you there. And I said, well, yeah, I'm eating real quick, and yeah, I will show up there with my friend Jessica. And Jessica was with me, and Jessica Silveda. And he's like, okay. So me and Jessica go to the bar, yeah, you see my face, it's not amused. You probably already know what's going to happen here. Get to the bar, my friends, and the guy is nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. I message him and nothing. He's not responding to me. He's not reading them. He's doing nothing. So I'm like, okay. So it's already two strikes in one night. I'm not going to let this guy struck again for a third time. I'm not, I'm like, at that point, I'm totally over this dude. This dude is garbage to me. And like me and Jessica are at the table just talking shit. Excuse my language. We're just talking bad about him saying like, how could he say he's gonna go to the dance and he didn't go to the dance? How could he say he's gonna be here at Hot Rods and he's not here? You know, like she's just being a supportive friend and trying to comfort me at that time. And in walks in two clowns, <laughs> two female clowns, and they come and they're huffing and puffing. And um, I knew one of them and the other I didn't know actually. And so I saw them kind of looking a little bit distraught. 
as soon as I saw one of the girls or one of the clowns come in uh, that I knew, by the way, this was a, this was a friend. Uh, I'm calling her a clown because not, not to get too much chisma in here or not too much mishrik, but when I was eight months pregnant, she wanted to go and say, basically when I was around this, as you see in the background, when I was almost ready to pop, she decided she wanted to go and tell all of Hilmar, which is where my in-laws live, all of Hilmar that my baby and Hilbrun's baby was not his baby. Yeah. And I, that was somebody I considered a friend. So that's why for the, the sake of the story, I will not call her that because she is not that. Um, she's a clown. <laughs> so anywho, so I wave to the clown and I'm like, oh, come over here, we're over here. So she sits down at the table with her other clown person that I, I didn't know. Like I'm telling you, I didn't know that girl. And so they sit down and the girl that I didn't know, she starts talking about, or the clown that I didn't know, she starts talking about um, how is her boyfriend's truck there, which this person already passed away, rest in peace. Um, how is her boyfriend's truck there if he's nowhere to be found? And so they're just, you know, talking about this and getting upset about this. He told me that he was home watching movies and eating popcorn. And that's not true because his truck is here and he's not here. Well, then the other clown says, well, he's probably at the other bar down on the other town, Stevenson Bar and Grill. So then me and Jessica, having nowhere to go and nothing to do, Hot Rods was not happening on that night. There was barely anybody there. We said, you know what? Can we go with you guys? And this was a time of adventure, by the way. Uh, and they said, of course. So we all get into the clown's car that I didn't know, which I don't condone going into people's cars that you don't know. And the other clown that I didn't know, she came with us and me and Jessica. So we're in the car and we're going to Stevenson Bar and Grill. And um, yes, we get to Stevenson Bar and Grill and what do I see? As soon as I walk to the door, oh, I see Hildbrand next to the jukebox and he's waving to me. Yeah, what do I do? What do I do? I ignore him like I didn't see him waving to me. I roll my little eyes like this. And then I go to the bar and ask for my angry orchard because I was obsessed with angry orchards and blue moons. Yeah, I'm that girl. <laughs> and so I went to go get my angry orchard and shortly after that, who, who was right next to me? Hilbrand. I didn't give him a smile, I didn't give him nothing. Because I was clearly upset, right? And he right away apologized to me and started to tell me that he was at Hot Rods, okay? His phone died, all right? So that's why he asked his younger sister to send me a friend request on Facebook so she can message me. Back then, I had settings where you cannot message me if you are not my friend. So the message was pending. I never saw it because I didn't accept the friend request because I didn't know who it was. And I got it, you know, at, at the table while we were at Hot Rods all talking together. And I didn't know what to do with it. So I kind of just left it there. And yeah, he was telling me his phone died and that all of his friends came to Stevenson Bar and Grill. So he hopped in the car with them and came over here. So he was asking his sister, if the sister could please send me a message letting me know that they went to Stevenson Bar and Grill so that I'm not mad when I get to Hot Rods, right? Because he's not there. Um, but I never saw the message, unfortunately. So when I got there, I let him know, never read your, that message and never got it. And um, yeah. <laughs> So long story short, I was kind of going with the flow and I was being nice. I was being normally nice, you know, as nice as I could be. And we hung out for a little bit. We hung out for a couple hours only. Um, and I was very comfortable with him already, to be honest. And so the night progressed and he said, well, let's try going back to Hot Rods. That's what they do there. They hop from one town to the next, because there's literally only one bar in Hillmar, one bar in Stevenson, to my knowledge. And so they just like hop back and forth. And so that day we went back to Hot Rods. When we got back to Hot Rods, they were closing up shop. So he asked me if I would like to go eat with him at Denny's. 
I said no because I was exhausted from not only Carnival, but just exhausted in general. And, and anybody who has been in Carnival, it is very exhausting. Uh, you practice every day for almost six months. <laughs> And not every day, but in the beginning, beginning you practice a few times a week, but then towards the end, it does become a daily thing that you do practice. And then, yeah, you travel around so you get tired. All the normal stuff. So I told him, no, I'm not going to Denny's with you. I will see you another time. But at that point, I didn't even know if I would want to see him again or what was going to happen after that. I literally thought that was just going to be it. Hung out with you one time. That was it. Well, anyways, uh, Jessica had drove in, so she was in the car heating it up, and I was saying my goodbyes. And as I was saying my goodbyes, we said goodbye for the night. He asked me again, are you sure you don't want to come with me? And I said, no, 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 thank you so much, but I'm going to go home and sleep. And home to me was Nisa's house, and I love that girl. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I know I already said thank you to you so many times, but thank you again from the bottom of my heart for always letting me crash at your house, even before Hildbrand. Um, that's just like an amazing friend right there. But anywho, so Jessica was waiting for me. I said goodbye. I'm walking to the car. I get in the car as I, I changed the picture to uh, one of our church wedding photos. This is one of my favorites. Um, so then I get in the car and I'm about to close the door, right? I'm about to close the door. And Jessica saw him in the mirror coming, but I didn't. And so he grabs the door to hold it from me closing the door. And I look to see who it was, and it was Hilbrand. And I'm just staring at him like, what is he doing? That's never happened to me before. And he's like, oh, this is all Portuguese, by the way. He didn't speak a word of English. So that already in the beginning was very hard because I had to speak only Portuguese with him. And if you guys saw episode two, my Portuguese needs some help. <laughs> so uh, that in the beginning was an interesting factor as well. Uh, so he, he's looking at me, I'm looking at him, and I'm just like, kind of like, looking at him like, what do you need type of a thing? Like, what do you want? And then he said, oh, I just wanted to say goodnight. And at that, that point, I already knew what was going to happen. Because, brother, we already said goodnight back there. So why are you running to the car and holding the door open. Yeah, so I kind of already knew what was gonna happen at that point, that he was gonna want to lean in for a kiss. And I did not want to embarrass this guy. I mean, yeah, he did piss me off that night. Um, but for the few hours that we hung out, he was a very, he was a gentleman. So I didn't want to embarrass the guy, poor guy, you know, in front of my friend. So yeah, when he leaned down for the kiss, I didn't turn my face, I didn't push him back, I didn't do any of that. I just kind of let it happen. And it happened. And I'm very happy that he did that. And I'm happy that it happened because that moment is the, the moment that changed it all. So after that, the rest is history. After that, um, I did feel sparks with him, which I never felt before. So that was, look at me, I'm getting emotional again. <laughs> so yes, it was a beautiful moment. And that's why I like to share the story because I think it's funny how sometimes in life a negative could happen and we, we dwell on that, right? But if we just give it a chance or let that go, maybe something positive could happen from it. And I'm really, really, really happy that that happened because I was, I'm not trying to say that I was a superficial person because, you know, I never really was super superficial. <laughs> I never really was super superficial. But I mean, he was not, I just changed the photo to a family photo of me and him and our baby. She's three now. So this is an old picture from our first Mother's Day. Um, so yeah, so he was not like my typical style. He wasn't my type, as we say. But I would like to tell any of you listeners, I would like to say, you know, screw that. Screw your type. Um, not literally, but literally throw that ideology away. 
get that out of your head. Because sometimes we close ourselves to what could be a good thing just because we think like, um, that's not my cup of tea or mm, I don't think so. Like that person is this, this person's that. Well, whatever, we all have our flaws, right? But I accepted the flaws just like he accepted mine. And I'm so happy that we gave each other a chance because I'm not his typical type at all. And he's neither is he mine. Um, so I'm really happy that we gave each other a chance. And babe, I can go on and on about you, honestly. He is, and I'm going to say another curse word on, on the air. He is a badass bullfighter, a badass capinha. His father, Norberto Rocha, also from Sahara Ribeirinha, he was an amazing, amazing capinha, um, especially during the 80s, 80s and 90s, most of the 90s, I think it was. But he was a very great capinha, and his son, his only son, actually, followed in his footsteps. So it's kind of a cool thing that, yeah, it is cool to say that my husband's a bullfighter, but it's even more cool to me to say, yeah, my husband's a bullfighter, but his father was also a bullfighter. Um, and he followed his footsteps and he took after his dad. So I think that's, uh, that adds to the factor that it's super, super cool. And then people just always think that it's interesting that I'm American and he's Portuguese and we're together. They think that's an interesting thing. Um, so babe, I just want to say I love you so much. And before I start crying on the air, I appreciate all your hard work that you do. And me and Amelia love you to pieces. So, dears, thank you so much for tuning in to this special birthday edition for my hubby, Tobran Hosha. Thank you again from Ama Conversa. Until next time, beijinhos.